It may not feel like it, but these two islands are actually part of the Caribbean. One island is known for its blue liquor and colorful architecture, while the other is known for its diving and ecotourism. One island is more commercialized and touristy, while the other is more untouched and traditional. One island feels very Latino, while the other feels more American, but both are officially part of the Netherlands. I'm island hopping between Curacao and Bonaire! The islands of Curacao and Bonaire lie in the Southern Caribbean, just north of Venezuela, and are part of a small chain of islands called the ABC Islands, which also includes Aruba. I'll begin my journey on Curacao. I'll first explore the areas around Willemstad before heading to the island's more rural and traditional center. I'll then day trip to the neighboring island of Bonaire and return to Curacao to explore the island's rugged north. We've just arrived on the island of Curacao and this is the hotel we're going to be staying in for the next few days. The Pieter Mai Hotel in the Pieter Mai district of Willemstad. I guess this is our bathroom and here's the, the shower area. It's kind of strange because it's kind of well open which I've never seen anything like this before so it's gonna take some getting used to but I'll make it work somehow the neat thing about this hotel is that it's a little like a small village because it even has its own restaurants and even a small market and in fact what's even neater is that these apartments are not only rented out to tourists but in fact locals live here as well so it doesn't get any more authentic than that. I didn't have to go far to get my first glimpse of local culture. Just up the street from my hotel, I stumbled upon these colorful murals depicting the history, struggles, and aspirations of the Curacaoan people. This is the city's Pieter, my neighborhood, where we're staying, and just a few blocks from our hotel, there's supposed to be a cathedral, which is apparently the largest cathedral on the whole island, so we're gonna take a walk and check them out. Now it's actually one of the city's newer neighborhoods. It was founded in the 1800s, so it's not as old as Punda or Otrabanda. Here we have a nice example of new and old. Cathedral. It was built in 1870 and although it's not the island's oldest cathedral, it's actually its largest and many locals and tourists also consider it to be the island's most impressive. This room we see right here is Pieter Mai's famous Berg Altena and it's one of the most photographed streets in Willemstad and the reason it's so popular is because of these houses that are built uphill on this 30 degree slope. And in case you were wondering, yes, people actually do live in these houses. This is the town's famous Charlu district and it was built around the 17th and 18th wealthiest community and you would see all these grand mansions. Most of the mansions became abandoned and today all of them have been restored but people no longer live in them. They're mostly businesses and believe it or not what was once the island's wealthiest neighborhood is now its poorest. That's a pretty excellent example of how things can go from good to bad. Although many of the mansions stand abandoned. Many also still stand as a reminder of this 
city's former wealth. Now I actually read that this is a high crime area and it's actually the most dangerous neighborhood on the entire island, but it's safe to visit during the day, but I wouldn't come here after dark. Believe it or not, we're actually here towards the end of July and I know that most people avoid traveling to the Caribbean during the summer because of hurricanes and constant rain, but the climate of Curacao and the ABC Islands in general is very different from the rest of the Caribbean. This is a very dry and arid climate and it's well outside the hurricane belt. So this is one place where it's actually better to come during the summer. And in fact, many Caribbean guidebooks even advise traveling to the ABC Islands in summer rather than winter. Now, if you look at it, Geographically, all three of the ABC islands, Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire, are actually located in South America. So even though it doesn't feel like it, we're actually in South America right now. Okay, we're in the beautiful city of Willemstad. It's probably without a doubt the most beautiful and most colorful city in the Caribbean. And the city was founded by the Dutch in 1634 and it's named after King William I who was the first king of the Dutch Republic and it was actually the capital of the Netherlands Antilles from 1954 all the way up until 2010 when the country dissolved. With a population of over 120,000, Willemstad is the largest city in the Dutch Caribbean. It is also the island's main cultural and commercial center. The city's unique colonial architecture made it an UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1997, and in 2013 it made the list of the world's 10 most colorful cities. Today it is considered to be the most beautiful city in the Caribbean, with the colorful Punda waterfront being one of the most photographed streets in the world. This is the city's famous Punda district. It was founded in 1634, the same year as the city. That's because this was actually the original part of Willemstad. The rest of the city was built a bit later. Its original Dutch name was actually the Poon. won't take you long to realize that this city has a very European feel to it. This is absolutely amazing. Willemstad has been at the top of my list of cities to visit for quite a while. This is the Mikve Israel Synagogue and it's a last remaining of the island's three original synagogues. The original structure was completed in 1674, but the current building actually dates from 1730. And 
It's actually the second oldest synagogue in the Western Hemisphere. The oldest is in Recife, Brazil, but this one is the oldest in continuous use. It's kind of funny that I'm visiting my first synagogue in the Caribbean instead of in Israel. What folder? I guess you need a head covering requirement. Here they have these traditional kaputs or skull caps. I don't even know how to put them on, but if, uh, do you want to look Jewish now? You're supposed to put different color. What color? Maybe white. Yeah. Okay. Oh, man. Yeah, the first Jews to arrive on the island of Curacao actually arrived in the 1630s and they were Sephardic Jews of Portuguese and Spanish descent and most of them came here because they were fleeing the Portuguese Inquisition in Brazil and they later sort of spread across the Caribbean. Then during World War II, the island saw an influx of many Ashkenazi Jews from Eastern Europe who came here to escape the Holocaust. Today there are still around 350 Jews living on the island of Curacao. Snow floor is sand everywhere. Oh, we just bought some famous Curacao. We bought a blue one and a green one. <laughs> I think these a lovely lady, Dad. What's the name of this store? Angie, Angie. All right, yeah, come to this store. Best Curacao on the island. Okay, okay. Donkey. This beautiful building you see behind me is the former temple Emmanuel, and it was built in 1867. It was originally a Jewish reform synagogue built by the Jews who separated from the island's original Sephardic Jewish settlers. It was actually one of three original synagogues found on the island, but then after the reformed Jews united with the Sephardic Jews, it was purchased by the government. Then for some time it served as a church, and now again it houses government offices. The name Curacao is actually believed to have originated from the Portuguese word for heart, but many people also believe that it might have been the name the local Arawak Indians called themselves. But today it's become associated with a shade of blue because of that famous blue leader. Right here we have a statue of Queen Wilhelmina, and she was queen of the Netherlands from 1890 through 1948, that was a 58-year rule, longer than any other Dutch queen. This is the city's famous port, Amsterdam. It was built in 1635. It was actually in active military use until 1816. And the structure contains a governor's palace as well as the Dutch Protestant church. And up until 2010, this served as the seat of government for the Netherlands and Antilles. We've taken a short break from our sightseeing and we've stopped here at the Iguana Cafe and I ordered a blue lagoon that has the traditional blue curacao liquor, the coconut and some other stuff. <laughs> That's delicious. Oh wow. That's a lot of food. I'm gonna enjoy that and we'll get back to our adventure. I have to say that this really is without a doubt the most beautiful city in the Caribbean. But it wasn't always like that. The Dutch weren't very creative when it came to their colonies and they imported the same architectural style wherever they went and in fact all the original buildings of Willemstad were actually covered in white stucco but anything who knows something about optometry 
knows that if there's something white like snow or a white building and the sun is out it hurts your eyes and the legend goes that a local doctor actually realized this was a problem and he had a law passed that all the buildings in the city had to be painted different colors so that's why Willem Stad looks the way it does. On the other side we have the Otra Banda district. It's actually the newer of the city's two main districts. It was established in 1707 and the term Otra Banda actually comes from the Papiamento words Otra and Banda which mean other side and that side isn't as commercialized or as touristy as Punda and the architecture isn't so fancy and in fact parts of the neighborhood are a bit run down but I've heard that it has a more traditional feel and I heard there are also some nice museums and some attractions. Behind you can see the Queen Emma Bridge and that's actually what most tourists and residents used to get from the Punda to Otra Banda. You'll notice that it's moving, that's because what's unique about this bridge is that it actually opens up to let boats come through. So if you happen to want to get across while there's a boat coming through, you can take a free ferry. Uh, the church's main attraction is this statue of Pope Paul VI. <laughs> 